Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to wrap up quite a few of our smaller methods in our DB class just to give us a little functionality and then we'll have one more video with the DB wrapper and then we'll move on to our model class. And um, so here we go. Um, right now if you remember correctly, when I, if we dumped our DB object there was all of our results were living in our uh, Let's look at the top here. We had this result um, parameter that that was living in, and that is a private deal. So we're not going to be able to access that directly. So we need to extract that out into um, a method. And so down here at the bottom, um, what I want to do is maybe underneath this. Well, let's do it above the error method. I'm going to say public function uh, results. Okay. And all this is going to be is a getter. So what we're going to say is return this results. Okay. And that is set anytime we use this query method, which most of our methods are going to use our query method. If you remember, result is set right here with our fetch all. Okay. So um, what does that look like to use? Well, let's go back to our home page here. And we have this context queue. And what I want to do here is instead of our delete, we're just going to go ahead and run our query. And I'm just going to dump some raw query right in here. And we'll say select all from contacts. Okay. And sure, we'll just do order by uh, L name, comma. Okay, and if I run this query, um, I don't really get anything, but I could just, after that, I can run contacts uh, equals contacts q results, okay? So we can do that, that's one way to do it. Um, so let's go ahead now and refresh. Well, actually, I need to dump that. So right here, let's just dump and die contacts. Refresh here. Uh, not sure. So again, I put um, an S on that, and that needs to be singular. Maybe I should put an S on it so I stop doing that. So um, if I refresh the page now, we get an array back of two objects. So we get an array of two objects. Um, so I have two rows in my database, Curtis and Antoinette Parham. If you look here, we have uh, Antoinette Parham and then Curtis Parham, and they're ordered in this fashion because of our order by uh, clause here in our SQL statement. So order by last name and then first name. Um, so that, then we could use this data um, in our application so that results is working. Um, probably a prettier way to look at this would be um, say get rid of this second line here and just say context equals and then we can chain on results like this. That's another way we could write that and that will work just fine and it looks a little nicer in the code. Um, albeit kind of a long line um, just to get all the contacts but that's just how we could actually run a query, a raw query and then we can get uh, the results of that query with our results method. So the next thing I might need to know um, is, well, what if we're expecting back just one row? Um, and what's going to happen with our current result set um, is that we're going to get an array back with one element, and inside of that we're going to have, a, you know, the, the first indexed will be that object. But many times, if I'm expecting one back, I just want the object. I don't want an array wrapped around that. I don't want that object stuffed in an array and then have the whole array return to me. So what we could do is uh, we're just going to create a public function first method. Okay? And what this is going to do is return this uh, result zero index, okay? Um, so there's kind of a flaw here 
Um, so let's go up here, results. Result could be anything, you know. So let's go ahead and actually make sure that um, we have this. So what I want to do is do a ternary operator right here, and we'll say if not empty, um, this dollar underscore result. And then we're going to return that, else we're going to return an empty array. Okay. All right, so um, let's see if that works. And we need to go and actually use first instead of results here. So we have errors like that. And you can see right off the bat, it worked. Um, now I don't have uh, an op, and a, this object is not inside an array. So I can just access this directly. Um, for an example, what I could do, um, let's just change this to context so it makes more sense with that first method. But I could say um, dump and die the first name of contact. I want to refresh the page. Um, you can see that I have just a string of Antoine, Antoinette. Um, so that's exactly what we want here. So that that's working as expected. Um, so there's just a few more little small methods that I want to that we can use in our application that be useful. Um, and so another getter basically is going to be count. Okay. And whoa, Adam, what are you doing? It's not Adam's fault. It's my fault. Okay, and then I'm going to return this. So again, that's just a getter. Um, let's do one for our um, last insert ID. So I'm just going to call this for short last ID. I like that, I guess. Um, so we'll return this. Perfect. All right, and then I, another interesting uh, method that I'd like to write here is I want to. We're going to use this later, but it'd be neat if we just knew our column names from uh, from any given table. So I'm going to extract that out to you. So we'll say public function get columns. And it needs a table. And then what we can do is say, we set our uh, queue. No, let's just let's just return this query, and then I'll just show columns from. Okay, and then read results. Okay, let's test that really quickly. Um, do here say um, columns is equal to db get columns. And then we'll dump and die columns to test that method. Missing argument one for get columns. Yep, I need to give that a table. <laughs> and here we go. So now we have a, a result set of a bunch of objects, and each object is going to be a row, uh, a column in our table. So the field would be uh, ID, type is integer, so we have all this information. Can it be null? No. Is it a key? Yep, there's a primary key on there. Uh, it's also auto increment. Then we can look down and see F name, it's bar car, with a limit of 150. Uh, it's left. Can it be left? No. Uh, null. Uh, and then you just go down and you can see every one of our column names. This is going to come in handy 
uh, later um, in our model class. So we'll just go ahead and get that out of the way now. Not the model class, but that little function or method rather. So I uh, hope that's helpful and let's see how far we are 10 minutes in. I'll go ahead and end the video there and the next video will be our last DB wrapper video. And um, so I hope you're enjoying this and I hope you're already seeing how uh, you can use this DB wrapper in any application. You just plug in this DB class and just go to town and, and make sure you have, uh, you're have you using PDO with secure wrappers that are easy to uh, manipulate and use. So I hope this is fun and um, up to this point most of this has been from Alex over at Code Academy. Um, he didn't have the get columns method and he did things a, a few things a little different but um, for the next video uh, this was all from me so if it's bad code don't judge Alex about that um, the next couple of methods are all me so um, anyhow I hope to see you in the next video